will be something like nitrous oxide for depression. And uh, this is a fascinating topic to me. And I made a video about this last night, but I was in my evening mindset and I get a little intense and I did an outside video where I talked about this. I might look it over, but I don't think I'll upload it because I just wanted to really get to the point of something that I find that may be a very key component for people who do seek these states. The edge of consciousness, as I call it, the anesthetic state where you are not quite coherent, but you are awake, but you're in another mindset. This is ketamine has been used for uh, people who break their arms, say, severely um, for a long time now. And what the, what the ketamine will do is put a person in a disassociative state where they don't feel the pain because they're not associating themselves with the pain. But also, they're not associating themselves with them, with their body or their reality. In other words, your mind can be <laughs> coherent yet in another place. And most people hear the term nitrous oxide and they just think laughing gas, partying, you know. But I've been using it as a tool for self-exploration for a while now. It wasn't until about a year ago that I discovered that it could be used that way. I was, you know, as all other kids would go to parties and do whippets and, you know, buy the whipped cream canisters and still today I've got my special little and I've always kind of looked at my, laughed at myself when I would do it by thinking, oh God, you know, that's so, you know, it's so dangerous, it must be harmful, it's got to be bad for you. And then people would say, all you're doing is cutting off oxygen to your brain. That's not true. That's not what happens when you take, take nit nitrous oxide. And, and that's what people are told, that you're basically just getting a head rush by losing, you know. But after doing it so many times, I said, no, it's not losing air. There's something more to it. There's something going on. So I looked into it, and um, what I've been doing is uh, microdosing nitrous, if you will, where, you know, you can take two whippets and put it in a canister and, you know, take it in one or two big hits. I'll spread it out over five minutes and take ten slow draws. And <clears throat> the reason I do this is because my mind is in a very pliable state at that point and I'm able to pick out things that I find important. And I'd love to get more into detail about this, but it's just like being in a psychedelic state where the front of your mind is shut down, therefore you can pull out deep truths. And I did my best to write them down last night and I took a couple notes as I was coming out of it. and. Um, uh, I had some very interesting realizations, but one of the things that came up while I was doing my research was the fact that uh, it's been using been used lately in psychology for trying to help with anxiety or depression, mostly depression. So I thought I would read this little article, um, just this little part of it. This is from um, it's talking about ketamine. Now ketamine is a disassociative, and so is nitrous. They're very similar in that type of action, and it has to do with glutamate and these NMDA receptors. These receptor sites have glutamate and glycine, I believe, and what it does is it blocks the uptake of glutamate. This stops the transmission of nerve signals, which stops the flow into the spinal column, which is how you can lose your um, sense of feeling, how you, what the anesthetic does. Now, these are very layman terms, but of course, you can look up how anesthetics work anywhere, and you'll find out that in the end, they have suspicions and ideas of mechanisms of action, but they don't quite understand why they work and how they work. It's still an unknown thing. LSD is the same way. We understand that it's an, you know, um, an, an HT receptor, uh, <laughs> HT52A receptor or whatever it is, and that it's uh, that it affects us that way. But other drugs are that way too, and they don't give us the same feeling. So what is it that sets certain substances apart, and where do these deep thoughts come from? So this is in uh, Psychology Today, um, talking about ketamine. Ketamine can also diminish pain and produce conscious sedation and analgesia in adults. Um, okay, it's talking about kids and adults. Studies over the past decade have found that a single 40-minute intravenous infusion of ketamine at sub-anesthetic doses can lead to rapid improvement in mood and alleviation of suicidal ideation in a significant percentage of severely depressed persons. This effect begins within several hours after ketamine administration and lasts for several days. 
The most noticeable downside of ketamine is that it can cause psychotic and cognitive side effects, of course. Such effects typically don't last long, but they can be disturbing. Optimum, optimal dosing, frequency of administration, and even route of administration are all active areas of investigation. Ketamine is thought to be worked by blocking the effects of a neurotransmitter called glutamate on a specific type of glutamate receptor known as the NMDA receptor. Blocking NMDA receptors can rapidly alter how brain pathways function and connect with one another. These changes in brain pathways may be involved in alleviating depressive symptoms. Considering ketamine as a potential treatment for depression is complicated by its psychiatric side effects and by the fact that it's sometimes abused as a recreational drug, a recent study published by Dr. Peter Najail and colleagues in the journal Biological Psychi Psychiatry reports that nitrous oxide, laughing gas, as an inhaled anesthetic commonly administered by dentists during dental procedures, may help patients with treatment-resistant depression. Why would someone even consider the possibility that nitrous oxide would help persons with severe depression? It turns out that nitrous oxide, like ketamine, blocks the action of glutamate at the NMDA receptors, but by a mechanism that differs from ketamine. It says, um, unlike ketamine, nitrous oxide does not have psychosis-inducing properties, although, like ketamine, it can sometimes be abused. In the proof-of-concept study, Najil and colleagues compared the antidepressant effects of a single administration of nitrous oxide to a placebo gas in 20 patients with tre treatment-resistant depression. Each patient was tested at both treatments in separate crossover trials one week apart. Um, the results are intriguing. When compared to placebo, nitrous led to a substantial improvement. 35% of patients demonstrated a good to excellent response with nitrous oxide versus 5% with placebo. So it goes on, and it's a long article. Um, this is fascinating stuff. Here's just one more little article from clinicaltrials.gov. Major depressive disorder is a global medical problem with significant shortcomings in cur current therapy. Chief among these is the delay between initiation of pharmacologic therapy and clinical improvement in symptoms. Recently, ketamine, an NDMA-NMDA receptor antagonist, has been shown to rapidly and effectively reverse the symptoms of MDD. Nitrous oxide, another NMDA receptor agonist, may produce the same effect with a cleaner side effect profile and perhaps without the need for intravenous access and anesthesia personnel. Therefore, we propose conducting a pilot randomized placebo-controlled double-blind crossover study in which patients will receive up to 50% nitrous oxide in oxygen. Um, so this is what they're suggesting. And this is from the, you know, the clinical trials page. You can look up these studies anywhere and you can find so much information that people have put out there. One second. I got to do something. <laughs> so, as I was saying, um, this could be a very useful thing for using for people who have major depressive disorder. Now, we're not just talking about mild depression here. We're saying that they're suggesting that nitrous oxide, laughing gas, the thing that's sold at every whippets that are sold at every head shop from here to Timbuktu, and that everyone has always told us just makes you stupid and kills brain cells, is completely bogus. And anybody who's done nitrous knows what it's like to take a big huff of laughing gas and, and just get that high and then let it fade away. Instead of doing that, I'll take like four or five whip, you know, say three or four whippets in one of these containers and get about 20 pulls off of it and prolong the effect over a period of 10 minutes or so rather than just a quick one minute thing. Now this isn't something that just popped into my head because I was researching it. I started noticing the effects that nitrous would have on me when I would do it. Now I don't do it very often so I don't go out and just buy nitrous and I don't recommend people who are unfamiliar to go out and buy nitrous either. This is definitely just an informative video about the potential and um, however if there's something so simple that can be accessed we could find out that no you're not just cutting off brain circulation you're actually blocking receptors which help to ease depression in the long run it's a very interesting concept and it's one that i think will be looked into further as time goes on and we'll look back and see that some of these recreational drugs that we've always you know said people need to stop doing such as cannabis, you know, the way that cannabis was always told that it would cause cancer and psychosis and all these problems, and now all of a sudden it's one of the most promising medical substances out there for all types of different ailments. 
And of course, opium, we know the addiction to opium and the problem with it, but look at how useful it is for pain when people need it. And um, cannabis, <laughs> opiates, nitrous, you know, what's the difference? The beautif beautiful thing about nitrous oxide is that it's not a substance that has to be taken intravenously or snorted or eaten. It's a gas, a gas that dissipates quickly. So it may very well be something just on the tip of the iceberg on working on understanding depression and the NMDA receptor, because I think there's really something there with glutamate. And, uh, and blocking those sites seems to ease depression. Now, I'm very curious about how glutamate plays the role, and I'm going to be researching that down the line, but uh, that's, that's all I've got for now, and, and uh, it's just fascinating stuff to me, so, you know, whatever, go have some nitrous, right? No, don't. I didn't say that.